hi everyone welcome back to the channel for another video i wanted to come and share one of the hardest truths i had to accept in recovery which turned out to be one of the greatest skills lessons takeaways that i am still using 10 years later almost 10 years later 10 year recovery anniversary this august and it's also a hard truth that i see clients having to accept and former clients using that hard truth to their benefit in a similar way that I have. So that's why I love guiding people through recovery so much. Yes, seeing them find food freedom and more acceptance of their body, all very cool. Helping them to find frameworks, perspective shifts, ways of coping, ways of seeing themselves, the world in a very different way in the long term, that's the sweet spot for me because I think that's really what's central to keeping people well and recovered long term. Food, all that stuff gets you well. This internal shift is, I believe, what keeps you well. So one of the hardest recovery truths that I had to accept, which turned out to be a huge benefit, was that recovery is action-led thought and feeling followed. So what do I mean by that? Well, to take my own experience, not just as it relates to recovery, but generally in my life, until I went into recovery, I really had a belief that if I felt anxious or fearful of something, it meant that I wasn't ready. It meant that I couldn't do it and I had to wait for that anxious, fearful response to just go away one day. That I'd wake up one day or someone would say something magical to me. That was always one. Like someone's just going to get, I'm going to watch a YouTube video or a friend's going to give me a piece of advice and all of that belief, fear, anxiety is just going to dissipate. I believe this so strongly that my both of my parents separately said to me in my early 20s, Amelia, because that's my real name, exposed, you can't just wait to be ready for the things that you want. You can't just sit and think that someone's going to knock on your door and offer you things you're passionate about or just give you experiences that make you at the moment feel anxious or like you can't do them. You have to go and seek them out. And I genuinely hand on heart can say I had no idea what they were talking about because that didn't make any sense to me. I know it sounds like the most obvious advice it didn't make sense to me. It didn't land. I didn't, I didn't get it. I was like, that's, that can't be right. I can now see that that again, just came from fear because my self-hatred was so intense for most of my life. My perfectionism, incredibly overwhelming. I didn't have a lot of margin for error. I couldn't go out and try things and potentially fail at them because I believed that the things I did well or poorly would then determine my self-worth. My self-worth didn't just sit in its own box off to the side and then I could go off and you know do things and try things and whatever happened, I'd still have this self-worth living over here. It was all tied together. So I think that's why I didn't get it. I was like, but hang on a minute. I, I have like so little regard for myself. I don't have enough margin for screwing things up because if I go out and I find out I am incapable or I am untalented or I am unlovable, I don't know what I'm going to do with that information. So me with this mindset and this approach to how I saw myself, how I saw myself in the world, how I saw the world working, I then get introduced to recovery and my first few runs at it, not successful for that reason. I'm sitting and waiting at some point. I am not going to be scared of this food. At some point, I am not going to be too anxious to not engage in movement. At some point, I will definitely reach out to a therapist. <laughs> never happened. Never, ever, ever happened. Uh, waiting for the light bulb to go off, waiting for the feelings that feel prohibitive to go away. It never would have happened until finally I got it. That advice I'd been given by my parents, by other people in my life. It finally found a home, it clicked. And I don't use that term lightly. I am not someone who's like, somebody said something and boom, it all made sense. That is one of the few moments in my life where that happened, where all the puzzle pieces were on the table or mixed up and then in a second, they all just made a complete picture. I got it, finally, that I have a fear and anxiety response, which I have to prove wrong. I am not going to wake up feeling differently one day. 
I am not going to be told something. I'm not going to read something. I'm not going to hear something. I have to, through action, show my brain that it is sending up an unhelpful fear and anxiety response. And I don't even know if it's unhelpful because I have never done this before, right? But from from everything I'm being told and I'm finding out, yeah, this degree of anxiety around food is not helpful. It's not a normal way of thinking about food. It's clearly having all these destructive impacts on my life. Same thing with body monitoring behaviors like body checking, same thing with my relationship with movement, same thing with my relationship with everyone in my life. Uh, I had to show my brain without really knowing what was going to happen because that's the deal with the most valuable things in life, the things that are really worth trying. There are no guarantees. You don't know what's going to happen. There are things that your fear and anxiety are absolutely bang on about, but eating disorders take that fear and anxiety response and they flip it. They take things that are absolutely necessary for survival and make them look terrifying. I think people really want a workaround. They want like a a cheat code or something like, but there's got to be a way for me to be okay with what the outcomes are going to be before I see how the process works or before I get to that outcome. And I'm here to tell you there is no cheat code. There is no second option. This is, you know, a part of the process, which is you have to do all the hard stuff in order for your brain to pay attention to the fact that its predictions are inaccurate, that its levels of fear and anxiety are not matching the situation. They're not matching what's going on. And you have to do that repeatedly and consistently. That is the boring nature of recovery. It is also, as I said, one of the most empowering things we can teach people. Many people are not faced with the reckoning of having to truly like that hitting home feeling, accept that nothing's going to change if nothing changes, that the way that their brain talks to them about themselves, the world, what they're capable of, what's scary versus what's actually wonderful, uh, that is not going to change unless they give their brain the opportunity to look at what actually happens, look at the evidence and then recalibrate. I would not have started my business. I would not have expanded my business. I would not have traveled alone to the places I have. I would not have connected with the people I have. I would not have been able to take care of unwell family members of mine or deal with trauma and grief and really like face some of my biggest fears in regards to some of those experiences, I wouldn't have been able to do that without that reckoning that recovery offered me. That approach and that perspective shift and that true acceptance of that kind of inevitability that one plus one equals two here absolutely made my recovery go in the direction I wanted it to go in. Not perfectly, not seamlessly, but that was always the thing I came back to. Even with my fertility journey, which I spoke about a few videos ago, there is so much anxiety and fear and unknown there so much every day and going through a, you know, very taxing, expensive process with absolutely no guarantees of what the outcomes are going to be or what that's going to look like. I am terrified. I am anxious. It is an uncertain outcome in one of the biggest, most important areas of my life, but I'm doing it because the fear and the anxiety is actually telling me how important it is to me, but it's not so big that I can't do what I need to do to get me closer, hopefully to the outcomes that are important to me. And you're not just learning from when it all goes great and right and all your outcomes are wonderful. You're learning just as much from when you screw up, it doesn't go to plan and you get to prove your capacity your resilience, that maybe you weren't giving yourself enough credit for how you could cope with, respond to, manage some of life's bigger challenges. I think we are all prone to putting it off until tomorrow, starting on Monday, expecting our future self to have some great epiphany or some great moment of clarity or to be a robot. It's not going to happen. Starting is starting, no matter how small that start is, no matter how small that goal is, uh, just being prepared to show yourself that maybe A, the outcomes you're predicting aren't accurate or that you're not giving yourself enough credit for how you could handle it, how you could respond, how you could manage, what you could learn. It's all valuable. It's why when a client has like a mixed week or maybe they just had a really, really difficult week, I don't sit 
in celebration of just what goes well and then discount what doesn't go well. It's why I ask them for the three W's. What went well? What didn't go well? What can we learn? The data that comes out of what didn't go well is just as valuable as what did go well. That's how we refine. Keep more of what is working. Leave more of what isn't. Learn from the two apply it to what you're going to do next. So this video on subject might be super, super obvious to people whose brains aren't wired the way that mine is or the way that <laughs> some of yours maybe are. It is some of that advice that we are told and we're like, love it in theory, feel none of it, don't get it, doesn't connect for me. But if you, you take one thing out of this video, it's there is no light bulb moment coming. There is no sudden disappearance of anxiety and fear not with the things that matter, right? If you feel no fear or anxiety and it looks too good to be true, it's because it probably is. That's what an eating disorder is, right? Uh, here, do all of this stuff and I'll take all your anxiety and fear away and I'll get you to all these great outcomes. Batten zero on that one with all the observation of eating disorders I've done in the last 10 years. So if it's worth doing, it's going to be scary. It's going to cause anxiety. Don't end, underestimate how you can handle that uh, and how worth it it is to be prepared to face that. Bit of a philosophical one, this one. I hope it was helpful. Let me know your thoughts below whether or not this kind of thinking uh, might apply to some of what makes recovery challenging for you or if you have you know, had a similar realization and been able to move through it what's helped you what did it contribute to uh what are some of the outcomes that that's helped with always love to hear from you uh i will see you all probably next week for another video much love take care see you soon